Good afternoon, Sheffield. Are you ready for our final game this afternoon? From down south, it's Southern Discomfort. From up north, it's New Wheel Order. Are you ready? They're sort of ready. And it's, it's number one versus number one on the jam line. Best way to start any game is with number one. Both, both jammers finding those three walls a bit challenging. No one's out quite yet. Both jammers on the floor. First penalty of the game is awarded to Southern Discomfort. But more importantly, our first lead jammer status is to New Wheel Order. But not far behind is the Southern Discomfort jammer. Managing to snatch one point to Southern to uh, New World Orders four. Now, annoyingly, going into our second jam, we will not see the jammer, jammers with the number two on their jerseys. I was hopeful, but didn't think it would happen. So straight into the scrim there for Southern Discomfort is Sully. And that is Sully out the front being taken on by Gaskell and recycled back to the back of the pack, allowing Jack Skatington out as lead. I don't think I've ever seen Jack without their war paint on. Like, I've not met Jack in person, like, in Tesco or something, you know what I mean? Like, I've only ever seen Jack in full skate attire. I, I think Jack goes to Tesco's like that. Oh, OK, OK. I, I, I mean, I'd be disappointed if they didn't. Great free wall at the front there. Managed to just trap Jack to the inside edge. Nice deep reset. A little jump on the inside line there for Sully and gets him out. And Jack calls it. Right, well, as we begin this third jam, frantic as they've all been so far. Great recycle play by NWO there. Windmill straight back in though, not defeated by that. And that is Serial Killer out at the front as lead. And yeah, the Sudden Discomfort Jammer is just taking a little seat in the penalty box. 30 second recharge for London's Jammer. Serial back up on their feet after a bit of a tumble on the inside edge. Claims the full four with another pass. And Southern Discomfort managing to keep that wall together at the front. Trying to minimise Serial Killer's point scoring on this pass. And both jammers are now back on track. And Southern Discomfort Jammer is out, but I think is taking another sit down. But Serial Killer has had enough of this and is calling it off. A few members of our audience there discovering that they truly are sat in the danger zone. Uh, the action can actually come towards them if need be. Windmill getting a cut track penalty on the inside line near the end of that prior jam, hence why Gaskill will stand as a lone jammer for this next jam. So 
So Gaskell is the only jammer on track at the start of this jam. And they are out as leads. We also had a pivot line start. I love pivot line start. I love a run up. Caught me off guard there for a second. Not being caught off guard is Gaskell as they whiz through. Spinneroon. Stick the landing as best they could. Full four in the sky for them. Just having a bit of a bit of a switch of fortunes. We've got some discomfort jammer back on track, but Gaskell taking a little rest. Now Windmill has obviously been doing back-to-back -back jams, uh, penalised at the end of the previous one, puts them straight back into this one. Not a great angle for us announcers, given where they're all positioned on corner two. See exactly what's happening. There, there is roller derby happening at the far corner yes, of the hall. There's, there's a lot of people bundled together on wheels, argy bargy. Yeah. Some lovely offence going in, trying to get Windmill out. Frantic footwork there on the inside line. Windmill doing everything just to stay upright. Finally getting reset. We now have both jammers back on track. Gaskell taking advantage of that momentary confusion and just nipping through the pack. And now jumping that apex, landing, then falling, so four points. And Wimmer Wilkin is out. Yes, precious seconds left of this jam. I think Wimmel's more pleased that they actually get to go back to their bench and take a proper rest, really, considering they've just done back-to-back -back jams. And that last jam looked exhausting, and that's just from standing here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got two three walls starting this next jam, as both teams have blockers in the box. Don Giovanni for New World Order. Scar for Southern Discomfort. Both jammers are getting completely stuck into a cheese wedge of opposing blockers. Just about to say everyone was back on track and then no. Multiple but, blockers reporting to the box. I was about to say, Yes, I was about to say, I almost, it was fair, we lost one apiece, but it's actually uh, two for New Wheel and one for Southern. But we Both jammers out, Leeds been awarded two Southern Scar. Discomfort. Scar is lead. Jam is called, points are given. Penalty box is very loaded at the moment, so only a handful of blockers will turn up for this next jam. On track, that is. The other blockers will turn up from the penalty box. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll turn up as the jam progresses as a nice surprise. Last minute change of blockers there for, some, for New World Order. And another pivot line start. And it is Jack Skatington again out as your lead jammer. As we uh, shed blockers that started the jam in the penalty box, we gain a few more. Rotating door, unfortunately, on our penalty box today. And obviously, the more blockers there are on track, the harder it is for the jammers to get through, as we're now seeing. Oh, that was a big hit there. That was Jack knocked off and decides, yeah, I've had enough, I'll call it. Yeah, it's one of those moments where you suddenly go, oh, yeah, I'm lead, aren't I? I, I, can, I can call this off. Oh. So, I could go back there, or 
just all stop. So a solid eight point jam there from Jack takes New World Order up to 48 points. Four point jam pushes Summon Discomfort up to eight. We've just got over 20 minutes left of this first half. I'm going to jinx it, but we've currently got an empty penalty box there. I've said it. Yeah. Can't take it back now. Sully for Summon Discomfort trying to find a gap on the inside line. Gets checked in, reset by Shrooms. Neither jammer having an easy time of it. Both jammers have now been run back to the back, and it is Sully out as lead. It was a great reset by Ron Reb there on the serial killer. Sully capitalizing, getting lead for some discomfort now. I, I know all of our officials are not tipping their hat to a lady. It, a star pass has happened. First one of the game as well. I think it is, yes. So, and if you've started a new bingo card, punch that square for star pass. And making quick work of that first score. Yeah, Shrooms pass. found rooms to get through and scored themselves full four points. <laughs> Sully cashes in their lead jammer status. And pack advantage to New World Order starting this jam as Sudden Discomfort have won in the penalty box. Well, given everyone's forming up on the jam line, let's see who, who gets the monopoly on this then. A little bit of jammer on jammer action on the jam line. Yeah. Making Win. sure that that Sudden Discomfort jammer is well and truly in the back of the wall. Uh, that's uh, McLeod for New World Order as your lead. I think first time jamming as well, this half. Game one, lose one, unfortunately, our blocker rotation with the penalty box. Gaskell checks windmill to the outside edge. Can they get the reset? Right to the back of the pack. Oh. Fortunately, gets themselves a direction penalty. Windmill's get back on track a bit earlier. And another direction penalty being called, this time for number Henders, 79. Henders, unfortunately, yeah. But I don't think there's any room for them, so they are going back on track. Rightfully so, uh, no room at the inn, so going to have to wait till the seat's free before they can serve their time. And that's number 7-9 going back to the box for their penalty. Meaning there is just one New World Order on blocker on track at the moment. But they are doing an amazing job. But they do now have two more friends. <laughs> Both jammers are back in the pack over there, at the far side from the audience. That free wall of New World Order's blockers was a bit too tight. Multiplayer called on one of the defenders. Lost the penalty box. Ooh, jam comes to an end. That was thick and fast. It was, and there was, there was a lot going on in that little corner over there that none of this lot could see. Key thing is, our refs, all eyes on. Penalty seen, penalties given, penalties served. That's what matters. This time, it's Southern Discomfort who's got the advantage. See if they can catch Don, number one, at the back. Scar straight ahead to the front, takes on the two wall. Say that, that two wall up the front looks to be doing a very good job of holding Scar and bringing them right back to the back to start again. And doing a cheeky little bit of offence. Well, you've just got to mix it up, you know. Whatever gives you the advantage. 
One line last bit of defence. Scar's got lead. Shroom rescinds. Scar's out, possibly scoring now. And it's Giovanni who's still trying to make their initial pass there for New World Order. A little bit of an assist from Pivot Shrooms, and they are out. Managed to call it off there before before they could grab any point. Just two points by Scar for seven discomfort. But what's more important is they held New World Order to no points in their jam, as frantic as it was. Currently, scores sit at 76 to New World Order, 24 to seven discomfort. Both jammers really testing the edges there. Yeah, I was about but to say. It's, it's Jack that finds one that works. Personally, watching <laughs> Ferris, it's like I'm surprised that Southern's jammer has, has any ankles. They're just constantly they're bending around. I don't know how they have mobility. I think some jammers like replace them with rubber. Like that, that's the only explanation I have. Speaking of, we actually have had another star pass. Uh, so now Fridge is jamming for Southern Discomfort. Star in hand, working ah. the way through the pack on the outside line. You, you are correct, Jess. And Jack is really having to work to get this pass, but finds an exit, and then they're off. I do love how some jammers just seem to like fall through the pack, but it works for them. You just missed it, but that was a wonderful spin through the last two lines of defence by Fridge. I'm starting to feel that our penalty box staff are acting like short order chefs, because the amount of skaters they've had to serve in just the last 20 odd minutes has been quite impressive and i think they always seem to come in um, in pairs maybe, maybe skaters get lonely in the box so we're going to take ourselves an official timeout which potentially gives us the opportunity to run through the rosters because we kind of jumped straight into the third game this afternoon we did shall i crack on with sudden discomforts ro roster yes go for it see what so we do we have 0 0 4 Wilm Windmill Wilkins, number 1 Ferris, number 1 2 3 C Bridge, number 1 2 5 Rick Rold, number 1 4 1 Bell, number 1 7 Sully, and that's to be continued. Ooh. <laughs> Both jammers getting out pretty much neck and neck, one of them is lead. Looks like it is New World Order that came out as lead, but is now behind. Frantically quick jam that. Four more points ordered to Southern Discomfort. And whilst we're setting up the next jam, continuing Southern Discomfort's roster. 1-8 Ferguson, 1-9 Ron Jib, 4-0 Jamie Dodger, 5 Aisbet. 5-8 Chaz, 7-6 Grim, 8-0 Scar, 8-8-8 eight, 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 Bullet Bomber, 8-9 Law Have Mercy. Oh. And that is Gaskell straight out on the inside line. Bless Henners there for just sneaking in past the pivot line as the jam whistle started and being able to continue yeah. in this jam. Whereas Cloud took out Windmill Williams, causing them to reset. Sort of a bit of a t-shirt team whip there from Gaskell. Unfortunately, New World Order have lost two more blockers to the box. 
giving Southern Discomfort a, a well, solid three wall there. I was about to say, Southern Discomfort went all in on trying to stop Gaskell there. Yeah. They've got the reset, which is what they wanted. Gaskell finds a gap though. Windmill was able to get through also. Four points to everybody. That's Gaskell out to the outside, but Windmill stuck on the now replenished three wall. Broke too soon. <laughs> Deep reset there, dragging Wimmel back almost all the way to corner one. Gaskell's just re-entered from the same place. Probably the slowest both jammers have been so far in this jam. Oh, Wimmel is now also being brought back to the pack. Nibijan has actually managed to fully get past corner two just yet. Precious seconds remaining of this jam. And just as we got into the straightaway, the jam came to its natural end. Full two minutes. Full two minutes. Eight points to Southern Discomfort, puts them on 36. A very strong 12-point jam to New World Order, which moves them up to 103 points. No, no one seems that impressed. Oh, there's, there's been so many hundreds today. Yeah. You needed a 200 point game. That's what you want. Mm. Nine minutes left on the clock as we go into this next jam. Scar pincered at the back behind a free wall of white jerseys. Don Giovanni, I think, at the front for New World Order, but not not finding a space just yet great awareness from the remaining blockers for both teams to maintain pack stability there and just forcing their way through the middle if you can't find a gap make a gap Don just managing to stay upright as they take the inside straightaway. Gets the full four. Coming back round for another scoring pass just as Southern's jammer is dragged back. I believe Scar is still trying to find their way out the pack for the first time. Yep, it is Scar that has picked up a penalty there and is just taking themselves to the box. Has someone greased the floor since the last game? Admittedly, maybe. But the skaters have clearly shown that they may tumble, but they don't fall down. Many of them yeah. getting bouncing back right up, right? And Southern Discomfort are just rolling round, trying to keep at least one person in front at all times. Well, Don cashed in their lead jammer set, so with only five seconds remaining of that jam. Does mean a power jam start. Hmm? Means a power jam start. Well, given Scar stood, they're going to have less than 10 seconds left on their penalty from the prior jam. So, no pressure, Jack. So we went from what looked like a pivot line start back to a constant jam line start. In the confusion, Jack's able to find a gap and get through. And sudden discomfort trying to get in there and help their jammer through. Not quite managing to do it this time as Jack was back for his scoring pass. That familiar free wall wedge that we've seen so often today has pincered Scar in. But Southern come to assist to free their jammer, though. To say, I'm pretty sure Jack was sort of thrown out of the pack there by his offence. It, it was effective.
Again, both jammers really, really pushing and having to dig in over there in that far corner. Unfortunately, at some point in the over there, Jack picked up a cut track as signaled by uh, jam ref Big Whoop. I was about to say that previous few moments was seen to be the slowest Jack was, but I think sat in the penalty box on the penalty will be the slowest Jack is in this jam. Deep reset by Cloud there on Scar. All the way, almost back to the jam line. running backwards yeah. on his toe stops. Moonwalking almost, you could say. So, with lead lost, we will run the full two minutes. Not too much of it remaining though in this jam. And Jack came out the box and straight through the pack. Scar doing what they can to capitalise on the full momentum that New World Order gave. And Scar did manage to sneak through at the end there, so... Four and a half minutes remaining of this first period. Oh, and some discomfort are asking for a timeout. We're going to have a little bit, little bit of a rest. So I think it's your turn yes, to I was tell about us say, about Yes, I say, we, we learned via yourself the roster for some discomfort. So I'll let you all know who's got the jerseys on for the new wheeled order, starting with 095, Jarvis Shocker. One, Don Giovanni. One, three, two, eight, Hankin. One, five, Addison. Two, Shrooms. Three, one, six, Lily Gaskell. 3110 Lord Jack Skatington 60 Kirkham 7 Cloud 7105 Serial Killer 747 Scooby Zoom 79 Henners and 95 McLeod Managed to do that rather quickly actually now. <laughs> I was going to say, he probably went a bit, bit too quick on that. I know, I'm too used to having to sneak it in in less than 30 seconds at the start of a lineup or something. So it's Serial Keller out to jam again for New World Order. I believe they are another of the many, many junior skaters that are on, that are playing for, with adult teams now. Oh, it seems very obvious that uh, Junior Derby is like one place to make sure you've got fresh new talent coming in that knows exactly what they're doing. Yeah. And they just all have so much energy and make the rest of us feel so old. <laughs> some, some of us are quite old, but enough about me. Back to Jer Derby. And um, Lightning down fast the serial killer, the best way to start your day, uh, is out as lead jammer. And that is Ferris out on their scoring pass as well, just as Serial Killer comes through to pick up four points. I'm curious though, given the checkerboard design on the side of all of the new Wheeled Orders jerseys, are the skaters in that league big fans of Chess or Scar? Because it's going to be one of the two, right? Oh. This, uh, who, who's, who's having a break now? Sometimes, just maybe sometimes, our officials need a timeout. Yeah, right? yeah. Teams get to have timeouts, catch the breath. But our crew of referees don't get subbed in. They don't change that lineup, do they? That, that is, that is well, true. Our crew of NSOs are constantly working their laptops, filling their clipboards out, timing these penalties. They don't get a rest. I'm genuinely saying this out of respect, not just because I also NSO all the time as well. That's fair enough. I often feel more knackered after, after trying to ref. Because you have to bear in consideration our officials have effectively done... This is their third game of the day. And, you know. And none of them have been particularly slow-moving games. No, no, no. <laughs> They've been very busy. 
very occupied with official stuff to do. Sully versus Cloud as our jammers, 1-7 seven versus 7. Frantic start here, and this is about the slowest we've been now as they finally managed to pincer and lock down each opposing jammer, these blockers. And it is Sully out as lead for Southern Discomfort. Cloud still trying to find a gap. Something on the inside line. And yes, there it is. Gap, yes. And Sully follows suit. Same line works for them as well. I mean, if it, if it, if it works for one, why, keep, why change it up? In, inside line kind of worked for Cloud a second pass, but gets themselves reset on the outside edge. And now we are all coming back this way, just so we can get a better view. You're going the wrong way. <laughs> Skate the other way. That's it. So, Jam set has cashed in. Jam ended early. Four points apiece. You can have some four points. So can you. You have four points. You have four points. Everybody have four points. I just find this particular Jammer combination very, very satisfying. Yeah, we, you don't, we don't realise, audiences, from our position, we could see the numbers one and one on the back of these jerseys facing us. So... We're disappointed we haven't seen two versus two, then three versus three. <laughs> Having some slight technical difficulties, because we've, we've got to make sure everything's right. Okay. Because <laughs> every point has to be earned out there on track. Well, so key thing, this is this is legit and from the rules of the game. When it, when a jam ends, before the next one starts, you can correct anything that might be wrong. But if we had started the jam we're about to go in we wouldn't have been able to correct it. So some of our officials might have known something was a bit wrong, but everybody else wouldn't. But now, everything is right, okay? Everything is good with the world. Yes. Again. Well, not, not quite the whole world, but the world that's in this sports hall. Yeah, these, these four walls and this lino floor, everything is good. Apart from maybe that corner of the track there that Tomagotch is currently sticking back down. Actually, most of this track has been <laughs> ripped up. That straightaway got <laughs> utterly destroyed in the first few games, so... Here we go. Jam 17. Less than two minutes on the clock. Scores is all correct. It's 1-3-7, New World Order, 43 um, to 7 Discomfort. Speaking of 7, seven discomfort, discomfort... lead jammer! making the most of those gaps in the wall. Wrong footing shrooms there, making them take a tumble, and off they go. Ferris there as Lee deciding to cash in their day off. Uh, full seven points to seven, a cheeky free to New World Order. That call there trapped two New World Order blockers in the penalty box. But I mean, still a formidable two wall for uh, Windmill to face. Yeah, Cloud and Gaskell, let's see how they can monopolize this for their advantage. 
and Jack's having a bit of a block as well. Makes sense. Jack gets the reset on Windmill. Well, now, now we're definitely going the wrong way around the track. Pack mo motions forward. And absolutely flying over that. Apex. Now, very interestingly, because Jack rewound the clock, they hadn't actually completed their initial pass, which they'd only just done with that apex jump. If you want to be weird, they technically put them maybe put themselves like a negative pass. But they've undone it all now. Jack cashes in their lead jammer status. There wasn't any more time left on the period clock. And there it is, folks. Half time. Half time scores are new wheeled order 140, 41 points, seven discomfort. 50. Right, our officials are ready. Our skaters are ready. Audience, are you ready for the second half of a final game this afternoon? That one, gent is. That is Jack Skatington taking the first lead jammer of the second period. And Ferris, Ferris Duran not far behind. It seems everybody loves doing sneaky stuff on the apex between the corners one and two, which we can only barely see from here. I guess we could just make it up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good, they, but they brought it down here so we can see this next pass. I didn't think I really want to see it quite that close. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, you know, there's VR, there's 3D, and there's the roller derby almost ending up in your face. Both teams start this next jam a block of short. That's because they're still in the penalty box resting up from previous jam. The Don tries to find an edge on the inside line, but gets swept to out. Sully, on the other hand, gets dragged back behind corner four. Through the middle of Shrooms and teammate, but recapturing back at the front. Both jam... Oh, one jammer is actually making their way to the box. So Sully stands unopposed as our only jammer currently on track. I, d I don't think NWO are going to make it easy for them, though. Nope, nope. Cloud there tried to be sneaky just at the last minute with the drag back. But Sully's got back to the front line. Trapped in a two, now three, now, well, four wall of white jerseys. Spun to the outside edge, Cloud again. Reset them behind corner two. And that's both jammers back on track and no points scored during that power jam. But Sully has found their way out. Lead jammer with only 34 seconds left. That was a long, long, long run of defense by both teams. now trying to capitalize on these last few seconds of the jam pick up some points but Don Giovanni is now out and can score as well Sully cashes in the jammer status gets themselves three points but more importantly for Southern Discomfort they keep the new wheeled order on no point for that jam. And 
And that's Gaskell finding that gap on the outside and just running. Windmill check to the in, drag back to the jammer line. Gaskell now back on a scoring pass. Checked to the inside by Jamie Dodger, but Jamie Dodger was also checked to the inside. Both jammers are coming back towards us as the blockers run them back. Gaskell goes for round two on this first scoring pass. This time successful, four points in the sky. Windmill looks well and truly wedged into that wall, but they have managed to extricate themselves. And Wimmel is now out and able to score points. And again, because blockers get lonely in the box, they've got some friends coming to join them. Yeah, I was about to say, thick and fast these penalties have been coming. Three currently in the box at the moment. Two for NWO, one for SD. Wimmel, Wimmel taking maintains advantage. their composure, yeah, on the inside edge. Gaskell tried a spin on the inside, checked by Jamie Dodger, but Jamie Dodger checked as well. And while all that was going on, I don't think anyone quite saw Windmill coming in for that scoring pass. This is pass. exactly probably what Windmill wanted, really. Great footwork there. Toe stops keeping Windmill on the outside line. Gets them around for another full four points. Both jammers heading backwards on the track. Looks like Gaskell got the uh, reset on Windmill. Drags Decided them all the way back. It. Yep. Twelve points apiece in that previous jam. Uh, New World Order now up to 160 points. Seven discomfort on 69. Nice. Scar stuck at the back behind a free wall of white jerseys. And Serial killer thought they managed to get out of the front, but reset but back to right mid. Back. There's now sort of one mess rather than two walls, but there are two jammers in there. Just one jammer in there now, as Serial Killer is out. Only just spun around on the inside edge, managed to hold it, got themselves lead. Serial tries to start their scoring pass, but is immediately met by a wall of Southern Discomfort jerseys. Meanwhile, at the front, Wimmel is still trying to get out on their initial pass, just meeting that solid, solid defensive wall. Cyril has got out and is coming round for some more. Last line of defence there from New World Order was proper rotating against poor old Scar. Dragged back now to corner two. Serial oh. Killer just sneaking through on the inside line. And Scar has also, oh, has found an exit. Thought Shrooms was gonna stop it, but ran out of space. Ten minutes in so far, the second half. And you can tell they've been long jams, because we're only about to go into the fifth jam of the second half. Both jammers heading backwards. Good reset there by Ferris. Both jammers now approaching. 
Jack, though, finds an inside edge, but also found an outside line because they got themselves a penalty. But Ferris Bueller is now out as lead jammer. Helped by another blocker penalty. Great bit of space on the outside edge. Allows Ferris to maintain all the momentum. Swooping round for one scoring pass, right round again for another now. Dodging left and right, trying to get round those New World Order blockers. Almost made it, but denied at the last minute. <laughs> Only five blockers left on track at the moment. It's about to say, uh multiple contact penalties back to back to back dropping like flies some of these skaters a lovely pirouette there from from jack and they are out and scoring four points great duke there from ferris gets around and allows them to call off the jam but cash in the full four points they were carrying with them Those eight points pushes Summer Discomfort up to 77 points. The so it's Don for New World Order and Sully for Summer Discomfort. Both Jam has been immediately caught behind three walls of opposing blockers. Sully made to recycle, but then finds a gap. Seem to be some querying at the end there of whether there were, was or wasn't a penalty being awarded. I was about to say we're going to start with an empty penalty box, but, but we're not. <laughs> so, understand, let's take ourselves an official timeout to make sure everything is right. So we don't want to start a jam with things being wrong, do we? No. No, you wouldn't want that. calling in their, their um, alt ref just to, just to double triple check that what they saw and what we saw and what they saw and they saw we're all the same thing yeah you all want to be singing from the same hinge sheet as, as an official crew you don't want there to be any confusion over what has or hasn't happened I think this official timeout might have been the slowest this second half's been so far. I mean, definitely the slowest that the skaters have been. Yeah, as I say, we've got a full minute without any frantic action on track, so that doesn't feel right. No one's on the floor, no one's flying. Doesn't, doesn't feel like roller derby at the moment. At the moment, though. And on cue, our officials disperse. And we do have somebody in the penalty box, so it looks like someone was meant to be there. I'm just checking that the jammer hat's actually on. Yeah, you wouldn't want that pinging off mid-jam.
some fast footwork there by Cloud, but they got caught just at the end, dragged all the way back behind the jammer line by Jamie Dodger. And that is Southern out. Discomfort has been called as lead. Both got out so close together, it took the refs a little minute to decide who was first. Oh. And Wimmel says, yeah, I'm not running back. New World Order will start the next jam. A blocker short. <laughs> so New World Order taking a quick team timeout. Uh, if I maybe make a bold observation, I suspect it's because they have unfortunately had a skater foul out, having earned themselves seven points, but that skater still had time left on their penalty. So they pop somebody in, in tribute uh, to serve the remaining time, which will mean in the next jam, New Woodard will be able to field a full roster of blockers on track. And having decided who the lucky or unlucky person should be, well, bless, it looks like a good old Henners has decided to take one for the team and go, oh, yeah, I'll serve the rest of this penalty. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I'll, I'll have a sit down. Don't, don't worry. Precious seconds left of our team timeout. All of our skaters are forming up on the pivot line and then realised, yeah, I don't want to be stood there because the jam time is going to blow a whistle in my face. Why did they do that? So you could have just formed up there on the jam line and avoided being whistle blasted, but no. They're, they're being sneaky, no one knows. If you start there, no one knows. Except we all know. <laughs> no pack call gives Scar the opportunity to whiz out and earn themselves lead jammer status for Southern Discomfort. And I think Southern Discomfort's bench and skaters are very pleased about this. There are two more skaters, though, having a sit-down in the penalty box. Yeah, I was about to say, we've finally got Henners back on track from that previous penalty, but... Make well. that uh, possibly three and some four, and I don't know if there's going to be any skaters left on track at this point. Yeah, way. I was about to say, we've also uh, got Scar now serving a penalty, which means we'll go for the full two minutes, or the remaining one and a bit minutes we've got of this jam. And now, of course, because you can have two seated and one standing, that final block are making their way back to the penalty box. I'll say it again. Our penalty box crew are short order chefs <laughs> working the busiest day of the year. Serial colour, on the other hand, is having the time of their life. Uh. starting to look a bit a bit healthier out there on track now true there's uh, more blockers that Cyril's gonna have to weave their way through with this next scoring pass Scar getting dragged back now by Cloud to the pivot line almost to the jam line but not quite Meanwhile, at the front, Serial Killer just spinning around those blockers to pick up the full four points just before time's called on this jam. There we go. High fives in recognition of a very long jam from our prior jammers there. Very respectable 16-point jam that was for Serial Killer. There Takes the that new wheeled order up to... Today. True.
So bless them, our NSOs were like, hang on, Matt, we, we clocked you whiz around so many times, ref. And yes, cheeky extra points snuck in. That was a 20 point jam for Serial Killer. Puts New World Under on 199 points. That revelation was obviously too much for all of our skaters. Everyone was falling over. Everyone's dragged back to behind corner four. But Jack has now emerged from the chaos and they are lead. And Ferris Bueller fighting their way through that last blocker at the front there. As a second sudden discomfort blocker takes their seat in the box. So, New World Order will start this next jam with pack advantage. There's only as two of some of the Discovered's blockers are in the box. New World Order also start this jam on 203 points. My word. So he tried to take the inside, but was denied by the butt of cloud. Starting I mean, to feel that Cloud is becoming Sully's nemesis. It, it does feel that way. I mean, seven, one, seven. Both jammers have cleared the pack. A little bit of jammer on jammer. Don Giovanni says, I've had enough now. Back to, back to my bench, have a sit down. One apiece for each team still in the penalty box as we go into this 11th jam. So windmill, Gaskell to jam. Instantly, both frantically finding any gap between the wedges, the bodies they've been met with. And that sudden discomfort blocker returning from the block box just in time to get in front of Gaskell and stop, her getting, stop them getting straight out. And it is Windmill as lead jammer and Gaskell off to the box for a cut trap. But it appears Windmill has been awarded a forearms penalty. So we will have no lead jammer. We will go for the full two minutes. Well, full time for this jam. Although both, both jammers, jammers are out. Because you can't have no jammers on track. So they're both sent at the same time. They're both out pretty quick. I suppose you could have no jammer on track, but it'd be a bit dull. True. Both Gaskell and Wimble made their way through the pack. Heading round for some more points. Unfortunately, McLeod picking up a back block, back block penalty and going to join his teammate in the box. Windmill taking advantage of only having two blockers. Trying to grab some points. Gaskell now been reset, reapproaching from corner four. Finds an outside line, takes the in, slides through. That's time on that jam. With just over 10 minutes left to go. Southern Discomfort are so close to breaking that century. Do you think Scar's going to do it for them? Do mm. you think Scar's going to break the century for them? I hope so. They'll have some solid competition in Serial Killer. These two have been neck and neck multiple times this game. Scar is definitely giving it their best shot. 
Although brought back to the back of the pack by Jerry Attrick. Scar though quickly back on and straight back into a free wall. Now a four wall. At the same time, serial killer on the outside edge has been held by Southern. And, and the cut was successful. Southern got what they wanted. Serial goes to the box. Giving Scar 30 seconds with all, his, all their teammates to help them. For all the progress we've made almost all the way around to corner three, we're being dragged back to corner two. Nade corner one now by Shrooms. So Scar's still fighting through. Every moment they get towards the front, they get knocked to the edge and reset back. Cyril is back on. Star in hand, spinning out the pack. So Cyril's now capable of scoring. Scar so close to the front now, stuck between a free wall, looking for any assistance. Shrooms gets the reset though. There's the whistle. I think the winner of that one was the blockers. Yeah, I mean, round of applause to our blockers. That was two minutes of solid defense and only two points were scored. Uh, a point a minute is not the average you want in a game of roller derby. I don't blame them after that two-minute jam. Everybody just wants a little bit longer to regroup, be ready. Well, we've got just under eight minutes left of the second half. Southern Discomfort desperately close to the century on 96 points. New World Order sat currently on 220. Looks like everyone's taking advantage of this break. New World Order's bench having a little chat with the team. Penalty box people coming to have a bit of a chat with the ref. Uh, only person not taking advantage of this break is our most diligent jam timer over there. Continuing to do their awesome job <laughs> as we now get brought back into the next lineup, the next jam of action. Nice flat forward here. Both Jack and Jerris. Ferris getting stuck straight in. Jack almost getting completely getting swallowed by that wall of bodies. Ferris finds a line on the outside edge though. One wedge of three bodies left to get through. Tries for the in, unsuccessful. And it looks like there's a bit of a pile up on that front apex. Des Jammer there desperately trying to get out and does just before Jack. Ferris getting immediately stuck in, swept to the outside edge. Penn is being careful not to accrue any additional penalties as they've got a skater down in front of them. Ferris unfortunately earns themselves a cut penalty. Jack though is reset back to corner three. <laughs> 
Willie was Ron Jib to a forearms penalty, but they and that were was all on it on Jack. So some <laughs> benches may argue, oh, it was worth getting the penalty. And that's the first four points of this jam, and it's taken us well over a minute and a half for them to be earned. And now Ferris Jula back on track, just knocked off by Scooby. Straight through the middle, straight through their own wall, straight into Gaskell. Big challenge at the air against Jack there. Yeah. Five and a half minutes left of the second half of our final game this afternoon. And there it is, what we were looking forward to. Southern discomfort in that prior jam got four more points, getting them up to the century mark as well. Sully just did a forward roll out of the pack. Lightning speed there from Sully, out and earning them lead and back in to start scoring points. Poor. Contortionist movements there from Sully, maintaining their balance. Straight through for the full four. Sully being brought back to the back of the pack by Shrooms. But Don Giovanni coming through with their scoring pass. Sully there double checking. Bench, what do you want? Are we cool? Nah, I'm going to call it off. Keeping us in suspense with their hands in the air. Am I, am I going to call it? Am I going to carry on? Less than four minutes left as we go into jam 15. And of course, we now have ourselves an official timeout. And that official timeout has now become a team timeout. Right, team timeout is over. Lineup time now begins. That's it, Whoop. Keep yourself awake. Jam is on. Windmill up to jam for Southern, and as we believe, Scoops up to jam for her first time for the New World Order. And getting out as lead. Scoops is out first, but not lead. Windmill is out second and is given lead. Unfortunately, one of the Southern Discomfort blockers has picked up a penalty. Making it three blockers apiece on track as the jammers come in for their scoring passes. Both jammers through. Full four in the sky for each of them. 
and Southern Discomfort has lost another blocker to the bin. <laughs> Allowing Scooby just to slide round on that one foot there. Windmill cashing in their lead jammer status, banking the seven points they earn in that jam. Gaskell just managing to get involved in this jam just before the whistle blew. Instantly getting all in on Scar, trying to slow them down. I'm thinking Scar is sort of wishing that New World Order hadn't noticed they were one, one blocker short. Serial killer is able to get out, earning themselves lead. And it is one blocker apiece heading to the penalty box as well. Now it's Serial Killer's turn to be stuck behind a free wall wedge of opposing blockers. Almost turning into a tug of war match now. Scar coming right back to the back, hoping to get a little bit of a run up. And Serial Killer out and scoring some more points. Scar now just with a two wall and getting out for their initial. just to slice through there at the end and pick up two points that's it you, you can't stop until that whistle goes because you never know you might just get through And we started this jam with five skaters apiece. Yeah, another jam line start. A mess of bodies. Frantic footwork. Who gets out front first? It's Ferris. There you lead jammer. Jack Skatington though, not too far behind. Looks like that defensive wall just managing to, to tap Jack off at the end. All right, now this is the slowest these two jammers have been in this jam. Both getting deeply reset, winding the clock back all the way to corner two. Gaskell trying to capitalise on that little stumble there by Ferris, but he still makes it out of the pack and scoring some points. Both jammers there taking uh, checks from opposing blockers and somehow rolling off them like water. Offence going in there for Beulah. might be Ferris going to the box but yeah. I'm yep. looks like we have, slowly. have lost Ferris to the penalty box precious seconds remaining of this jam see if Jack can scrape in any more points there it is and also there it is that is the end of game three Last few checks before it becomes totes of fish.
And there we have it. With that whistle, the final score of our final game. Our winners, New World Order with 258 and Southern Discomfort with 124.